And uh, so open your Bibles in the book of Exodus 15. And while you go there, I just want to say, Billy, Billy Graver, you have, you have done such a good job. Give Billy a good hand. He's always faithful. He's always here. Uh, and uh, God is so good. Hallelujah. So tonight, he, Exodus chapter 15. I say tonight because it's been all, all week long I've been saying tonight. tonight. But this morning, Exodus 15, 15 verse 26. And the Bible says, Exodus 15 verse 26. If thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. In the Hebrew it says, I am Yahweh Rapha, or Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Father, we thank you tonight, this morning, that you are the Lord that healeth us. And God, as I minister on these four things about healing, I pray, Lord, that you will build our faith. And I pray for signs and wonders, not only to confirm the word at the end, but confirm the word while I'm even preaching, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing to people's limbs, people healing to their eyes and arms and legs and ears, healing in every way, even emotional healing. Father, physical healing in every way we speak healing and we speak the name of Jesus over those bodies and we say by his stripes we are healed and we say that you are the Lord that healeth us in the name of Jesus amen and amen the first thing about healing is healing is in the atonement healing is in the blood of Jesus what is the atonement the atonement is not only the forgiveness of sins, but it is the whole priestly manifestation of how your sins were forgiven. Namely, when the high priest went upon the cross and his name was Jesus. When he went upon the cross, the Bible says he took our sin upon him. Every one of our sins was taken upon him. Even like I said earlier in this week, that it was not so much the pain, the physical pain, that made the cross and the death on the cross so 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 brutal but it was the sin of the world the entire sin of the world on one man of that whole generation and of all generations that ever lived that sin of the world was upon him even before he went to the cross he's, he the intensity of that emotional stress upon him was so strong that his sweat became blood and eventually he went to the cross but you know what? He did not only go to the cross for our sin, but by His stripes we are healed. Yeah. And I saw somebody on TV the other day on YouTube, and he was saying, well, that was not physical healing, that was spiritual healing. But let me first read it. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4. It says, surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Here it is. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. So yes, we are healed for our chastisements. God healed us for our sin and our iniquities. But does the word by stripes we are healed only apply to our spiritual sins, our spirituality? And this brother said, it's not physical healing, it's spiritual healing. And I beg to disagree, because in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 14, the Bible says, verse 2, verse 17, and it makes a reference here to Isaiah's prophecy, and it says, when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his mother's wife laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and she, the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed of devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed 
all that were sick. Yeah. Healed all that were sick. Verse 17. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Saying he himself took our firmities and bare our sicknesses. Yes, he bore our sin. But he bore our sicknesses in the name of Jesus. There we have it. So either your favorite YouTube preacher with all these sound bites that always uh, attacks the, the, the preachers of the gospel and those who believe in healing in Jesus' name, either you're going to believe all those naysayers and Pharisees or you're going to believe Matthew, who knew Jesus, who wrote the book of Matthew and said that it might be fulfilled what Isaiah said, and namely the sickness would be healed. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say he's preaching the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. My friends, Jesus did not only die on the cross, but there were stripes on his back. And in the book of John 19 verse 1 says, Then Pilate took him, Jesus, and scourged him. Scourged him. Think of that when they took the cat of nine tails. I believe it was Josephus who describes the cat of nine tails. They had a scourge, a whip with nine uh, reams, and every one of them had pieces of glass and metal and bone. And when you would hit somebody, the hooks will hook into somebody's flesh, and they had to tear it off out of the flesh. Now, the, I, I, the Bible doesn't say Jesus got 39 of these stripes, but according to Roman custom or Jewish custom, that is what, what they did get. My friends, uh, it would not be beyond possibility that after 39 times that they put those stripes on Jesus' back, that his very bones started showing and muscle and sinew were ripped apart. Let me tell you, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Lamb of God. He paid a price for your sin. He paid a price for my sin. But that's not all. He paid a price for your healing. And he wants you healed. Why? Because by His stripes, by His scourging, and by His death on the cross, you and I are healed. Amen. Healing is in the atonement. And 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, this was after the death of Jesus on the cross. It's the same verse as Isaiah, except it says something in the past tense. Look what it says. Who in his, 1 Peter 2.24, who in his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree. He grew the tree he knew would be used to, to grow and build an old rugged cross. How many of you know that song? And so he bare his sin on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Past tense. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you're not going to be healed here tonight, this morning. Oh my goodness. You are healed. Your body's just going to catch up with what you already are. Hallelujah. On the inside and by God's covenant, you are already healed. And your, your body says, no, I'm not. And the devil says, no, I'm not. And people tell you, no, you're not. But you know what the truth is. Because in Isaiah 53, it says, whose report will we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. And the Bible says, by His stripes, we are healed. And in this case, we were healed. Yeah. You, Hallelujah. Number two. Healing. The second thing about healing. Healing comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. We advertise this revival. Power, I mean Holy Ghost and healing revival. I like that. You know why I like it? Because I made it up. I even made that fire. Amen. Holy Ghost and healing. You knew what my faith was. I was believing God for healing. And for the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, no amount of shouting at somebody when they're praying is going to heal somebody. And I'm Pentecostal, I like shouting. Amen. Hallelujah. I might not show it when I'm preaching. That was very funny, by the way. But I like shouting. But no amount of shouting is going to heal somebody. No amount of shaking is going to heal somebody. I've seen 
evangelist, pray for somebody and shake them till their false trees start rattling. And, but that's, and that's all fine. But that's not going to make the healing. Amen. It is the atonement, what Jesus did on the cross. And it is the Holy Ghost of the living God. We need a touch of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need God to come and take you by His power and do something in you. That's why last night, God just led us. And I wanted to pray for the sick, but the more I tried, the more it was just God touch the people, touch the people, touch the people. So this whole place looked like a crime scene. I mean, everywhere there were bodies laying. There's a song, there's a song that says, let the bodies hit the floor. I mean, I mean, maybe we can do it one of these days. But that was happening last night. I mean, the power of God was in the house. And you know what? Don't be surprised when the Holy Ghost touches you and nobody's even prayed for you for healing and you get healed and nobody gets the credit but the Holy Ghost and God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the Bible says in Romans chapter 15 verse 19 about healing by the Holy Ghost that through mighty signs, Romans 15 19, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. How do signs and wonders happen? How do mighty signs and wonders happen? They happen by the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. My friends, when I was just eight years old, I, something happened that caused me to determine I'm going to be a preacher one day. But it was confirmed when I was 13 years old. And 13 years old, I, I went, uh, I received a newsletter from an evangelist in South Africa where I'm from. And in the newsletter, I saw the miracles and the signs and the wonders. And I was captivated by it. I'm just a kid of 13 years old. And I looked at this and I was amazed. I said, wow, I didn't realize that God would do this. One day I'm going to go to Johannesburg because we lived out in the country. One day I'm going to go to Johannesburg and, and, and see this with my own eyes when I grow up one day. And in the newsletter, the man said, Dear friend, if you want the power of God, put aside a day of fasting and prayer. And I'm 13 years old and wasn't rocket science. All you have to do is stop eating. Amen. And I, I stopped eating for a day. For a day I fasted. And, and at the end of the day, there was one thing in my mind. My mom's cottage pie that would come that evening. Amen. And, uh, but I wanted to go pray one more time before we eat. So five or six o'clock in the morning, in the evening, I went to, on my knees, and I prayed, and I, I, by that time, of course, I wanted to be a preacher already, but, you know, it's just a child, it's a child thing, but I went to my knees, and I asked God, I said, God, must I really become a preacher? And my friends, I did not expect this to happen. I did not know that it could happen, I suppose. I didn't know that it happened still. But let me tell you, God came into my room and God spoke to me and I heard His voice, not in my outer ear, but words in my head, except that it felt like it filled my whole chest and my whole being. And it was, it was like thunder, like a rumbling in my soul. And the word said, yes, my son, I want you to become an evangelist. Praise God. And my friends, I got up and was never the same again. That year I read my Bible through from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. I, I sought God. I look back and I'm like, God, I can't believe I did those things. Where I would pray from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. as a teenager. I'm in Pentecostal prayers, shouting prayers, calling out to God all night long and reading Bible praying and listening and so forth and God stood in my heart in those teenage years miracles miracles healing miracles but I never saw any of those healing miracles but I believed that God could do them and finally after high school went to Bible College the Church of God Bible College in South Africa and in my second year of, of college uh, there on campus we talked we contacted the 
the, the black township just about a mile away had a little school there and asked if we could have a crusade in one of the classrooms. And we had, the, had a crusade and there was this one, uh, we, we, we had wonderful services. God moved maybe 50 people in the meeting. And one night there was a girl and I, taught, I said, uh, she was deaf in her one ear. And I, I said, let's pray for you. She was totally deaf in her one ear. I think it was okay. And I put my fingers in her ears and I pray like my life depended upon it. Because if this doesn't work, my career is ruined. <laughs> and I, I prayed with all my heart in the name of Jesus. And when I was done, she opened her eyes and she said, I can hear. She closed the other ear and through a stone deaf ear on the other side, she could hear. Hallelujah. And I would go to the streets of Pretoria on Tuesdays and Saturdays and Thursdays sometimes. And I would lay hands on the sick on the streets. I didn't see much results, but I, but I prayed for them. And I sought God for them. And little by little, God started moving and doing wonders and miracles and signs. Let me tell you, my friends, why do these things happen? Number one, through the atonement. And number two, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can do a miracle but the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! And the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 17 says, listen to this, Luke 5 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And the word the, the, the word power is spelled H-O-L-Y-G-H-O-S-T, Holy Ghost. The power is spelled Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The Holy Spirit was present in the ministry of Jesus. So much so that you could just stand in the presence of Jesus and people would be healed. I remember... Uh, you know, in my after I graduated from Bible college and started traveling the world, even came to the States and met Brother Ray and back to Africa, Central Africa. I, I was there in Central Africa, preaching there under the mud huts and all of that. And, and uh, one day we were under this mango tree, and we were praying for the for God to to do miracles. And we I prayed for hundreds of people, hundreds. And I remember one man came up to me and said, "God is really going to use you in miracles." You know, I don't know. Not, probably not the right accent, but I always remember just the effort of praying, 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 praying for hours for people. And I remember in that service, there was a man who came by. And I don't know about me, I've got this gift that wherever I preach, drunk people show up. <laughs> I mean, they, we can read Christian songs and they are drunk there, you know. Uh, not all the Christians, but you know, the, the, the people just show up. You turn on the lights and all the moths so show up, you know. And uh, so he came there and uh, his breath smelled like alcohol. But I could see there's something in his eyes. He said to me, uh, I know God is among you. He says, I need you to pray for my daughter. I know she will be healed. I know God is among you. He said, let me tell you why. He said, I came, I was walking back home and I saw something going on under the tree. We were like 50 people under the tree having church. And he said something was happening under the tree. So I came closer to see what it was. And I saw it was church. And I remember he used the word, ah, he said, and I, I thought, ah, I don't need church. That's how the Malawians may often talk. Ah, I don't need church. E. I told the Malawians, I can speak 50% of Chichia or their language because most of it is ah, e, ah, ah, eh. That's, that's just how they talk all the time. Really, it's, it's beautiful. And, uh, and so he said, ah, I don't need church. And we, but then he said he went by us on his way back to his hut. And as he walked by, he felt a pop on his leg. And he looked down and there had been a boil, a boil, uh, a cyst on his leg for two years that never healed up. But when he walked by where the power of the Lord that was present to heal, without him even wanting to be in the service, him being drunk and didn't want anything to do with it, when he walked by the atmosphere of healing, the Holy Ghost got a hold of him, 
popped his boil open, he wiped the whole thing off, and there was only an incision left that he showed me. It was God who touched a drunk man who didn't even want anything to do with us right now. Amen. Because the power of the Lord was present to heal. And you know what? You know what happened? You see, I got a letter. Because we prayed for his daughter from a distance. Then about a few years later, I know I got that letter somewhere in, in all my files. I, I'm just always praying, where is it, Lord? Maybe I don't have it anymore. But I got the, the letter. And he said, Pastor Hitchcock, I don't know if you remember me, but I was the drunk man who came to your meeting and God healed me of the, of the boil. I want you to know that my daughter was healed. He said, also, I'm now a pastor with my own church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My friends, it is the power of the Holy Spirit. Firstly, healing is in the atonement. Secondly, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And in the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Acts 5, verse 12, it says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest there is no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were all the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch, listen, that they brought the sick forth from the streets, into the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There also came a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they will heal every one. My friends, Peter's shadow fell upon the sick, and Peter's shadow healed them. But it wasn't Peter's shadow, it was just in that vicinity where Peter was. Maybe that six feet of where his shadow was, or even greater than that, but where he walked, when people, his shadow hit people, they were healed. Hallelujah! I don't know if you know who the grandmother of Pentecost was. Her name was uh, Maria Woodworth Eder. Maria Woodworth Eder, minister in the late 1800s and, uh, and then into the 1900s when Pentecost broke out and it goes all the way back to the early church. Maria Woodworth Eder, when you read her diary, uh, Signs and Wonders, uh, the diary of Maria Woodworth Eder, my friends, they tell how people brought her people to her for healing. Or oh, this was not. This is what happened. They were out in the fields plowing, 50 miles away, and the power of the Holy Ghost would strike people where she came, 50 miles away, and they called it a spell. People were going to a spell, and they had to put them on the ox, uh, the carts, the, the wagons, and bring her to Los Angeles, wherever she was, to get her out of the, get them out of the spell. And, and, and it's not a spell, it's just the anointing, the Holy Ghost that touched people over there. 50 miles, there was such an anointing on that woman that 50 miles away people were being touched by God. Amen. Amen. Last night, our one sister was standing here. I was two meters from her, about six feet, and I breathed on her. I went, and she fell under the power of God. The Holy Ghost hit her. That's just six feet. Imagine 50 miles. Amen. Oh, I want more of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I want more of Jesus. I want to be a body, holy filled and flooded with God Himself. Why? Why? Because there's people who need what we have. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost and power. Without the Holy Ghost and power, this world cannot be saved. We live in a world right now that has all the whistles and bells. We live in a world right now that think they are so smart and uh, got everything going and whatever. And they, 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 they talk about the decline of Christianity that, that, by, you, that by 2032 or something, you know, it's going to break all the way down according to the statistics and whatever. My brothers and sisters, I remember what Jesus said. He said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That rock of the revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. 
But let me tell you the message of Jesus being the Son of God, as powerful as it is, is weak without the Holy Ghost. Because, for example, Ryder Bunker said, we have to preach the original gospel. We have to preach the original gospel. But we have to preach it with the original power. Oh my friends, there's a, there's a feel-good gospel out there. And there's a, a weakened gospel out there. There's a watered-down gospel out there. And I don't want no part of it. But I also don't want to be back to where we have the correct doctrine. And we have all the, everything correct according to our doctrine. But there's no Holy Ghost in it. I want the original gospel. And I want the original power with it. The original gospel and the original because you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, I feel it here this day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost. Don't worry, I'll go through the last two pretty quick. Because I want to get to praying for you because there are people who need Jesus. There are people who need a healing here today. There's people who need a healing. There's people who need a touch from God. Amen. And we don't want to just have church and say we had a good sermon and a good song service. There's people who need the Lord here today. And God's got your name. And God's got your number. And God sees young people here today. Those young folks over here, God sees you. And God is putting his hand on many folks here in this week. I wouldn't be surprised if, if a few years from now, some young people sitting in this church right now will be full time in the ministry. Because the Holy Ghost of the living God touched them. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. The third thing about healing, like I said, I'm actually done now. But let me squeeze this in. Faith. Faith. We must have faith yes. for healing. Amen. And Mark 11, verse 22 to 24 says, Mark 11, 22, Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, have faith in God. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, have faith in God, for verily I say unto you. I like that. He didn't say, for thus saith the Lord. He said, I say unto you, because he was the Lord. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, have faith, that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 28, he said to the blind man, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Matthew 9, verse 23 to 24, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I want you to know, my friends, he is a man who believed, but he knew that his faith was weak. Yeah. He's been through so much, so many disappointments, so much hardships, that his faith was just hanging on a thread. And he said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Yeah. Uh, my friends, maybe you feel like you're not a faith giant here today. You're welcome to the crowd. Amen. We are no faith giants. But we serve a great God. And if you somewhere in your soul can muster just a little mustard seed of faith. Just a little mustard seed of faith. It's down in there somewhere. So somewhere in your soul there's a mustard seed of faith. Somewhere in your heart there's still a spark of hope. Bring that to Jesus. And look what your big God can do with a little bit of faith. And finally, the gifts of the Spirit. And I won't say much of that, but the gifts of the Spirit. And in the book of 1 Corinthians 12, we hear about the gifts of the Spirit and the healing that comes through the gifts and the miracles that come through the gifts of the Spirit. My friends, I want to pray for you right now. 
and we're going to do a prayer of salvation first, and then we're going to pray for the, for the sick. And I'm believing God that God will touch you. Please, my friends, don't be disheartened. Jesus really loves you. Jesus really, really loves you. He loves you so much. He'll do anything to get you healed. Reach out and touch you today. Don't feel your faith is too small. Don't think that you have done too many sins in your life that you're not worthy of a touch of God. But Jesus did not come to condemn this world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. So, please close your eyes and I want to ask you a question and I want to ask, is there anybody here that has never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but today you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If it's you, please raise your hand right now. I want to see your hand if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two, maybe you have received Him, but you can't really remember whatever. You just want to make sure. You want to make sure. Are you here today? Could you raise your hand if you just want to make sure? I see that hand back there. Thank you. Anybody else? You, you, um, you have received the Lord before, but you just want to make sure. Is there another hand, somebody? Number three, perhaps you used to serve God, but you backslid. And you're no longer serving the Lord. Uh, but you want to come back to the Lord today. If that's you, would you please raise your hand? If you want to get right with God today, just put up your hand, please. You want to get right with God. And then finally, maybe you have sin in your life. Uh, you, you saved, you're not fully backslidden, but there's sin in your life. Things that don't please God, and you want God to forgive you, and you want to get right with the Lord. Would you please uh, raise your hand right now? And I see that hand. Thank you. Anybody else? I see quite a few hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. It's not a shame to have sin in your life, that you, but it's a shame when you don't, you're not concerned about that. That's where the shame is. When you celebrate your sin and you have a lazy attitude about repenting from it. And I thank those who raised their hands today because it shows me that you're not comfortable with your sin. You want to be right with God. I feel there might be some more people. If, if you need to raise your hand right now, you've got sin in your life and you want to repent of it, why don't you just raise your hand right now? And you want God to forgive you of your sin. Let me see your hand, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see those hands all over. God bless you. I want to ask the whole congregation to please pray this prayer after me. Uh, it's going to cover all the things I just said. And, and some of you, most of you, it won't apply to you. But pray anyhow to help the people who raise their hand. Just say after me out loud, please. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I need Jesus. I need salvation through the blood of Jesus. So today, Lord, I repent of my sin. And I ask you, Lord, wash me in your blood. Make me a new creation. Let me all things pass away. Let all things become new. I open my heart and I ask Jesus to come live in me. Live in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Oh Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus died for me on the cross and rose again from the dead. And that he's the Son of God. And he's seated at the right hand of God. And that he's going to come again in a wonderful way to receive me unto himself. And so shall I ever be with the Lord. Lord, I open my heart, I open my soul, I open my spirit, for I hear you knocking at my heart's door. I open my heart to you, and I receive you in, and I call upon the name of the Lord, and I am saved. I call on the name of the Lord, and I am saved. I'm washed, I'm cleansed, I'm a new creation, I'm washed in the blood, I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm born again. Oh, let's give God a hand of praise today. My Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah.
Let's receive from him.